Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. What a song, ladies and gentlemen. My soul is anchored in the Lord. My soul is anchored in the Lord. Praise God. Listen to the words of that song again. We're not going to play the song again, but I want you to hear the words because there are some of you going through storms right now, and you may know somebody going through a storm. And, and when believers go through storms, storms only test to make us better, to help us trust in the Lord even more. But look at the words of this great and mighty song. Though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, listen to this, Dustina, but if the storms don't cease and if the winds keep on blowing, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Hallelujah. We ought to shout and rejoice, saints, if the storms don't cease in our lives and if the winds don't stop blowing, we have our soul anchored in the Lord. Though the storms keep on raging in our lives, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, still that hope that lies within is reassured. And as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. Oh, I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, we've got an anchor, ladies and gentlemen, and, and that anchor keeps us steadfast and unmovable despite the tides. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for that song. We thank God that we have an anchor. I'm going to talk today about the anchor for our soul. We're going to look at the anchor for our soul. Praise God. We're going to uh, ask Ryan if he would lead us in prayer, and then we're going to hear a message that would change your life. It's going to be called the anchor for our soul. Ryan, would you come on and lead us in prayer, please, my brother? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, Good sir. Good morning. <clears throat> All right, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another beautiful day today. We want to thank you for breathing the breath of life into us again today. We just want to praise you and glorify you in everything that you do. We want to thank you for giving Pastor Carter the knowledge and wisdom to teach and preach the word of your awesome word to this church again today. We just want to, we, we really just want to thank you for everything. Uh, bless everybody in this church. Bless Pastor Carter. Bless everybody out here in the world today. Um, we want to do that through Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. We appreciate you, Ryan. And thank you for leading us to the throne of grace in prayer. Uh, we want you to open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And we're going to look at verses 15 through 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 15 through 20. This message is designed to persuade everyone listening who's ever had problems, who are going through problems, who are facing storms in your life. We know we're involved in, engaged in spiritual warfare, and Satan's hitting a lot of us with everything he's got in his attempt to turn us from trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're going through a storm, or if you're, you've come through a storm, or you're facing a storm, then we want you to listen carefully to this word today. This word will be reassuring. It will strengthen you. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 6, verses 15 through 20. The Bible says, And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, 
that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now 15 through 20, the wording might be a little difficult. You've got some big words in there like immutability and immutable. Those words mean God cannot change. Once he says a thing, it's going to happen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. From the beginning, God is. He has not changed. He will not go back on his word. When he gives you a promise, he's the promise keeper. He's not a man that he should lie. You don't have to worry about God giving you fake news. You can trust God. You might not be able to trust CBN or sometimes even TBN or NBC or CBS or ABC, but you can trust the Lord. You may not trust some of the rhetoric coming out of the White House or out of Washington, D.C., or the Congress or the Supreme Court. You may not even be able to trust your local newspaper or your local TV channel, but you can trust God because he is immutable. When God says a thing, he means it. His word will not return until him void. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. There are no lies in the Bible. You can believe the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Everything that God says is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So as I've read the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 6, 15 through 20, you see that God... Uh, uh, swore to Abraham, and, and, and when a person swears something, they swear something based on something higher than themselves. Well, when God swore to Abraham that he would be Abraham's God, and he would give him a seed greater than the numbers of the sands of the sea or the stars of the sky, and that Abraham's seed will possess uh, the blessings of God, God had nobody higher than himself than he could swear upon. And so the scripture says he swore on himself and he swore on his word. In other words, God put everything he has on his word. When he gave Abraham the promise, he swore. He swore upon himself. In other words, God is willing to back up himself with everything he has. Ladies and gentlemen, he's willing to back up his word with everything he has. All of heaven, all the power of God backs up the word of God. So when God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee, you need to lay hold on that word. And no matter what your body's doing, no matter how your body might rebel, no matter what the doctor says, when God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee, he has already sworn upon himself. And he's taken an oath that if he cannot perform it, then he's not God. He has sworn upon himself, ladies and gentlemen, to keep that which he's promised. Promise you. So I know, I know, I know in my sanctified heart today that there are many of you who are going through troubles. You're going through troubles. Some of our listeners who are listening to the recording, you're going through troubles. You're going through difficulties. Some of you are facing problems, emotional problems, mental problems. Satan's trying to steal your mind. Some of you are going through marital problems. He wants to steal your spouse. He wants to steal your children. Satan's trying to rob your children, trying to get them hooked on drugs, trying to get uh, uh, your marriage caught up in adultery. Satan is attacking some of your body with sickness. Some of your households, your whole family's been sick. Some of you, Satan's trying to take you under. He's trying to kill you with his, his uh, 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 diseases and sicknesses and, and evil. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 
God made a promise to Abraham. He made a promise to us. Every word of God is pure. And when God speaks a thing, he will back up his word. Everything Jesus said, he will back it up. Everything the Holy Ghost reveals to you, God will back it up. Because God swore. He made a, he swore. He swore upon himself. Since there is nothing higher than God, God swore upon himself that he will back up his word. He said, my word will not return until me void or empty. So I know some of you are experiencing sickness, but you've got to learn how to hold on because God is going to heal you. I say, God is going to heal you. Well, how do you know, Pastor Carter? He's going to heal me. I've been sick for a long time. I know he's going to heal you because I know the word of God is truth. God is not a man that he should lie. When God says he will heal you, he will heal you. So you've got to lay hold on that word of God. We're talking today about our soul is anchored in the Lord. Our soul is anchored in the Lord. You heard the song. The songwriter said, though the storms be raging in my life, though the storms are raging in my life. And sometimes, he says, it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within is assured. He says, I've got a hope inside of me that even though I'm going through the storm, even though I can't tell you whether it's night or day, it's so dark, it hurts, this pain is so bad, this thing, this emotional thing is so hard. My husband left me. My, my wife left me. I'm left with all these kids. The kids are acting crazy. This thing hurts. They're ridiculing me. They're laughing at me all over town. The church people are laughing at me. No one wants to take my case. Uh, the judge threw me out of court. Nobody, I can't get injustice. This is painful. This pain in my body, it's agonizing. This financial situation, it's agonizing. I'm going deeper and deeper in debt. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, though the storms keep raging in your life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within is reassured. As we keep our eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, in every storm that you face, everything that comes against you, there's a, a peaceful shore. Put your eyes on that peaceful shore. Fix your eyes on Jesus. No matter how much the pain, no matter how much the agony, no matter how much the bank threatens to foreclose, they may threaten to take your car. They may threaten to take your house. They may threaten to kick you off your job. You may be threatened that you're going to lose your job. But don't tremble. Don't be afraid. Don't cave in. Don't, 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 don't uh, give up. There's a storm in your life. Satan has caused that storm, and Satan is the storm causer. He tries to keep people from putting their trust in the Lord, but you learn how to hold on. You learn how to store, hold on. The songwriter said, but if the storms don't cease, and if the winds don't stop blowing in my life, he says, he says, the songwriter declares, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. He makes a testimony in that song. He says, oh, I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor, and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable. It's that word of God, ladies and gentlemen, that we're talking about. The Bible says, the Bible says that by two immutable things, two things that cannot be changed, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation because of two things that God did that it is impossible for him to lie. We have this strong hope. God swore upon himself and God made his oath. He gave an oath of promise to us. He swore upon himself and he made an oath of promise to us. And, and, and so we have a 
refuge. We have a refuge, ladies and gentlemen, even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of the snowstorm. Your heat may be cut off. You may not have any water. The forest fires may be raging all around you. The ocean may be rising up like a tsunami. But we have an anchor, ladies and gentlemen. Though sickness and pain and disease may be whipping on your body, you just keep your trust in the Lord. Keep your eyes on the distant shore. God has a place that he's prepared for you. He's prepared a place for me and you, a place of peace, a place of healing, a place of prosperity, a peace of trans. A Peace, a place of tranquility. Keep your eyes fixed on the Lord. Don't look at the storm. The wind howls. The wind rages. The billows roll. The sea toss. The tempest toss. But keep your eyes on Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. One day the disciples were on a boat with Jesus crossing the Sea of Galilee. And the storm rose up. The storm was fierce. The wind was blowing. The waves were beating. The breakers were trying to break down the ship. And the disciples were afraid. And they looked at Jesus. He was asleep on the boat. Keep your eyes on Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. If he can sleep during the storm, you can sleep during the storm. But the disciples, in fear and trembling, afraid that they were going to die, they woke Jesus up and said, Master, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? How can you lie asleep? And Jesus stood up and looked at the storm, and he spoke to the wind. He said, Peace, be still. He spoke to the waves. He said, Peace, be still. And the winds calmed down, and the waves calmed down, and the sea was just flat and, and without, without turbulence. Jesus will calm the storm in your life, ladies and gentlemen. You may say, well, pastor, I've been sick for three weeks. I've been sick for four years. I've been sick for 12 years. There was a lady in the Bible. She had an issue of blood. She bled for 12 long years, ladies and gentlemen. And, and she, the doctors couldn't help her. She had spent all her money on doctors, and nobody could help her. But she uh, uh, said when she heard Jesus was coming, I know, I know I'm, I'm declared unclean, and I have no right to be out in the public. They could stone me to death, but I'm going to get out there. I'm going to see Jesus. She said, I'm, I'm tired of sickness. I've been sick for 12 long years. She said, but I think if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just touch the hem of his clothing, I believe I will be healed. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not a man that he should lie. He promised healing. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jesus said, with my stripes, you are healed. This lady pressed through the crowd, and she touched Jesus' clothing, and she was healed instantaneously. Ladies and gentlemen, God knows when to show up. He knows how to show up. He knows where to show up. He knows the storm you're going through. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows uh, uh, the medications you've tried. He knows what the doctors have said about you. He knows what you stand in need of. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, God will show up. You just hold on. You just hold on. The songwriter says, though, even though the storms are raging in my life, and it's hard to tell the difference between night and day. He said, I have a hope within me. It's reassured. He said, I, I will keep my eyes fixed on that distant shore. God has a blessed place he's prepared for me. And he said, the songwriter said, and even if the storms don't cease, and if the winds don't stop blowing in my life, he says, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to tell the devil, you can send your storm, and if your storms don't cease, I still won't give up. I still won't cave in. I still won't turn my back on Jesus. I know the Lord for myself. He's been good to me. He's brought me from a mighty long way. He supplied my every need. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. It's because of the Lord's mercies that I'm not destroyed. So even though the devil puts a storm in your life, even so, though he messes with your spouse, he messes with your family, he messes with your children, he messes with your church, he messes on your job, he tries to ruin everything you have, he messes with your reputation, he has people laughing at you, condemning you. But don't you worry, ladies and gentlemen. Every one of us has to go 
through a storm. Jesus said, if anyone will follow me, they will have to suffer persecution. But I want you to hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on and realize that Jesus is our anchor, our soul. Our soul is anchored in the Lord. Let's take a look at this. Our soul is anchored in the Lord. Hebrews six nineteen to 20 says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest after the order of Melchizedek. I don't have time to go into teaching about Melchizedek, but there were two orders of priests in, in the history of the Jews. One was the priestly order after the house of Aaron. That priestly order meant that priests uh, lived for a while and then they died. And then after they died, another high priest was appointed. But Jesus was not a high priest after the order or manner of Aaron. Jesus was a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Mel Melchizedek was the king of Salem, the king of Jerusalem. He was the priest of the most high God. Abraham met him when he came back from a battle, and Abraham worshipped uh, that uh, worship and bowed down before that high priest, worshipped God, and gave a tithe of everything he had to Melchizedek. In other words, he gave the tithe to the one greater than he who represented God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this Melchizedek, even though there's no genealogical record of him, he was a man born of, of flesh and blood. He was a man just like you and I, but he was appointed by God for a lifelong priesthood. And, and Melchizedek is a type of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not the high priest after the order of Aaron. Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. In other words, Jesus was in the beginning, and he will be there to the end. He has no beginning, no end. He was there. He formed the world. He created you and me. He's our high priest. And so the scripture says, he represents us in heaven. He's the high priest. He came from heaven and lived like a man, just like you and me, tempted, just like you and I are. But yet, hallelujah, Jesus was without sin. And the only way God could de deliver mankind from condemnation and Satan's clutches, God had to send a man who would live without sin. Nobody else had ever done that. No one else could resist the devil's temptations. And even though the devil tempted Jesus on every hand, just like you and I are tempted, Jesus did not obey the devil. Jesus did not sin. And so when, when Jesus was crucified and he was put to death on the cross, Jesus said, no man takes my life. I lay it down freely. The devil couldn't even take his life. But de the devil's blame for the murder of Jesus because the devil condemned an innocent man. The devil could not convict Jesus or convince him to sin. The devil killed an innocent man on the cross. Jesus, the only innocent man who's ever lived without sin. The devil put him to death, and therefore the devil comes under the sentence of eternal death by God. Jesus came. He lived the life we live. He yielded not to temptation. He did not give in to the devil's temptation. He fought the devil toe to toe. He took authority over the devil's power. He uh, 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 gave up his life. And he surrendered his life. And in surrendering his life, Jesus took our sins within his body on the cross. Our sins were nailed in him on the cross. In addition to that, the scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was wounded for your transgressions and mine. He was bruised for our iniquities. He, he, he took the, the punishment for our sins. And the Bible says, and with his stripes... We were healed. Ladies and gentlemen, that sickness on you, Jesus has already healed you of it. You've got to wait on the manifestation for it. So many people become impatient. Yes, I know you've waited three weeks. Yes, I know you've waited seven years. But you wait on the Lord. God has not forgotten you. God swore to Abraham, ladies and gentlemen, and he swore to us. We see it in Hebrews chapter 6. Um, Verses, 17, verses 16, 17, and 18, he swore on himself. 
he swore an oath, an oath that he would heal you. He's the God of healing. He's known as Jehovah Rapha. He's the God who will bring us through the storm. So ladies and gentlemen, when the church hears this and when uh, the unchurched hears this, whosoever hears this word and will believe, you can be saved. No matter what difficulty you're going through, no matter what, what trials are you're going through in your life, God knows the storms. He knows how to quiet the storm. One word, ladies and gentlemen, and that cancer is gone. One word, and that arthritis is gone. One word, and that uh, 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 poverty is gone. One word, and that adultery is gone. One word, and that lust is gone. One word, and that proud spirit is gone. One word, and your children come back humbly. One word, and your marriage is healed and restored. Ladies and gentlemen, one word. And we're made whole. That's how powerful our Lord and Savior Jesus is. In addition, he's given us, he's given you and me the same power that he has. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. The same mind that Jesus has is in the believers. Jesus said, I can do nothing unless I see my father do it first. Everything we see the Father do, we can do. Why? Because Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he took the keys from, from, from Adam, the keys to the kingdom. He gave the keys to the kingdom to the church, to you and to me. He said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We can use the keys to the kingdom. He's given us authority. Listen to this. Authority over all the power of the enemy. He's given us authority. So you bind the enemy with your words, with the word of God. You put the word of God on Satan. Satan cannot resist the word of God. He cannot overpower the word of God. He cannot cancel out the word of God. And then you loose with the word of God. You, you bind uh, pride and you release, you loose humility. You bind lust and you loose uh, 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 righteousness. You bind uh, poverty and you loose prosperity. You, you bind the enemy and you loose the things of God. We have this authority. So even when the storms are coming, you can speak to the storm and tell the storm, be still. Whatever Jesus did, we can do. He's given us that power, ladies and gentlemen. We can do everything that he did except die on the cross. We don't have to die on the cross. He did it. One man died once for all mankind, and that's sufficient for our salvation, for our grace, for our survival. Praise God. We thank God. I want to take a look at this word anchor, ladies and gentlemen. Anchor because... Uh, the songwriter says, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. So many people I know, many people in the church, they're running around, around they're confused. They go whichever way the wind blows. They go whichever way uh, their political party goes. If the Democrats say this, then they go this way. If the Republicans say this, they go this way. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people, even members of the body of Christ, who are caught up in this nasty political arena that we're in here in America. And you don't know what is the truth and what to believe. It grieves my spirit to see Christians fighting one another uh, over politics. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all being deceived. Every one of us is be being deceived from the White House to your house. And so why should we hate on one another when we're all being deceived? No one knows the truth. Only God gives the truth. That's why you've got to be so close to God that when you hear news, you've got to ask God, is this true or is it not? You've got to be so close to God that you know the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I don't believe everything I hear on the news. I don't believe everything I hear coming out of the White House. I don't believe everything I hear coming out of my neighbor's house. I've got to discern. God said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Seek the mind of Christ. Well, Pastor, how can I get the mind of Christ? By reading the book. By reading the book. By staying in the Word of God. 
by reading the book, not by reading Marvel comics, not by reading your, those so-called so superheroes, not by reading the great literature, uh, but read the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. The Bible says that our soul is anchored in the Lord. Let's look at this thing called anchor. An anchor is a heavy weight or stone made out of stone or metal. It's attached to a rope or chain. And when it's dropped overboard from a ship, it prevents the ship from moving with the current. The current is the power of the water underneath the water. You can't see it. You might see the waves blowing, but the current is stronger than the waves. And so the ship may be tossed by the waves, tossed and driven, but the ship can be tossed also by the undercurrent, the undertow. And so ships need an anchor. An anchor has to have a strong chain or a strong rope. It has to have a stone or a, a something metal uh, to grapple to grapple against a rock or grasp onto something solid. Ancient anchors were made like the modern ones with iron hooks to grapple the rocks and so hold on to the present uh, to prevent a shipwreck. A vessel that is not securely anchored does not have much hope of riding out a storm. Ladies and gentlemen, I say a vessel that is not securely anchored has no hope of riding out a storm. Many of you are listening today. You don't know Jesus as your Savior, and you're trying to ride out storms. You're trying to ride out storms based on what your mama said, or what your daddy said, or what Uncle Willie did, or what uh, 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 Cousin Jojo did. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to know Jesus for yourself. You've got to learn how when every storm comes, there's only one solution, and that's to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people put their trust in horses, some in chariots, some in their money, some in their finances, some in their good looks, some in the shape of their body, some in the words they're able to articulate. But I put my trust in the Lord, and I encourage you to put your trust in the Lord, because storms are going to come. When one storm goes, another's coming. So you've got to be ready. And storms often catch us blindsided, unprepared. And so many ships have been wrecked because of storms. They had anchors, but not solid anchors. Anchors could not grip anything solid to prevent them from shipwreck. And so ships have been battered against rocks. Ships have collided with one another. Ships have been destroyed by the water. Because they did not have the anchor. An anchor keeps a ship from moving. An anchor keeps a ship in place while the storms are raging. That ship is solid. It's in one place. It's fixed. It's unmovable. Ladies and gentlemen, when storms come upon us, we've got to be fixed, solid, and unmovable. And so the scripture says we have hope. Listen to this. Hope as an anchor for our soul. We have hope as an anchor for our soul. Paul was on a, 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 a vessel heading towards uh, Rome, and the ship was about to wreck at sea. The storms were, were terrible. The, 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 the day turned into black night, and the waves were beating against that ship, and the ship was about to break up. The captain uh, was telling them uh, to take down the longboat and, and rescue themselves. But Paul said, no, don't let the boat down. Stay in the ship. If you stay in the ship, we'll all be saved. He said, last night the angel of the Lord appeared unto me, and he told me the ship will be lost, but no souls will be lost if they will put their trust in the Lord. And so, ladies and gentlemen, your ship might be being beat up, torn up. Your ship might be tossed and driven. But if you have an anchor, a solid anchor, you can survive the storms. I say to you listening, if you're not born again, you ought to give your life to Jesus Christ. You cannot survive in this world without Jesus Christ. It would be tragic Listen to me. It would be tragic for you to go through this life, all the difficulties of this life, 
and, and not be saved. And the worst part is that when you die, if you die without Jesus in your life, you'll spend eternity in hell. You'll burn forever in hell. You'll be in torment forever and ever. And ladies and gentlemen, you need to get a concept of what forever means. Forever means forever. Eons upon eons. There be no end to your suffering. No be, be no ending to your pain. No ending to your storms. The scripture says all whose names were not found written in the Lamb's book of life will be cast into the lake of fire to burn forever. There be away from the presence of God. There be no escape, no rescue. Why do you continue to put Jesus off? Why do you continue to try to live your own life? Why do you continue to listen to that devil? Why do you continue to listen to those ungodly friends? Why do you continue to listen to the advice of those ungodly relatives? You must be born again. If you're living and you hear this voice today, you need to ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins, and then make him your Lord and Savior. Ask him to come into your life and save you, and he will. Because once he saves you, you have a right to eternal life. And when you die, you'll go into heaven. You'll avoid hell. Why go to hell, ladies and gentlemen? Because you're proud. You didn't, you didn't believe what the preacher said, or you didn't believe that preacher, or you didn't believe that person. You had problems with them. You need to hear the word of God. God's word is immutable. God has sworn by his word. He's sworn by himself that he will keep you. He'll keep you from all things. If you put your trust in him, backslider, backslider, you go to church every now and then, you go to church when it's convenient, you go to church when you're aching or when you're hurting or when you want something, you need to stop playing games with God. You need to get saved. You need to repent. You need to put off all those games. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let God come and you're sipping your cocktail. Don't let God come and you're in bed with someone else's wife. Don't let God come and find you lying against your neighbor. Don't let God come and find you hating someone because their skin is a different color. Don't let, I'm, I'm talking to Christians now, don't let God come and find you talking about your neighbor. Uh, you say, well, I'm saved, once saved, always saved. Do you believe that? There are going to be a whole lot of once saved, always saved people in hell wondering what happened. What happened? Well, what happened is that you played with God. You didn't believe God. You played games with God. It's time to get real, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get real. Get your anchor fixed. Get your anchor fixed. Our hope is fixed in the anchor of Jesus Christ. In the old days, ladies and gentlemen, they had a forerunner. The forerunner. He was the one who went before the person who was to come. Like John the Baptist was the forerunner for Jesus. But in the ancient days of shipping and, and, and marine life, the forerunner was the, the man who would get in the, the boat. There were usually two of them. They'd row the boat, and they would get the, the small boat, and during the times of storm when everyone was afraid that the ship would crack up, that it would be lost at sea, that there would be a shipwreck, the forerunner would take the anchor of the boat, and the anchor was fixed to a long chain. The forerunner would put the anchor in the boat and row the boat to the shore. Can you imagine that ship coming into the harbor? Can you imagine that ship coming in uh, 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 to your port, Philadelphia and New, New York and, and, and uh, places in Florida, uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, that ship is coming in, but the ship can't make it in because the storm is so great. The waves are so turbulent. The, 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 the turbulence uh, is so strong that the ship can't make it in. Well, they would get someone and put them in a, a longboat, a rowboat. Put the anchor in the boat with that person or two people, and they would row that boat through the stormy sea. Row it into shore, into the harbor. And then once they got on land, their job was to take that anchor and fix that anchor into a solid rock. Their job was to fix that anchor into something solid, 
that could hold that anchor. And then once that anchor was fixed and solid, they would give a signal to the men on the ship. And the men on the ship would grab that chain or that rope, and they would lay hold and heave, lay hold and heave, lay hold and pull, get a grip and pull. And they would work that ship into the harbor by pulling that ship into the harbor by grabbing that chain, by grabbing that chain that uh, held the anchor, and the anchor was fixed to a solid rock on the shore. And the men on the ship would pull that chain and take up the slack and take up the slack and take up the tension and pull that ship. They would actually literally hand over hand pull that chain and guide that ship safely to the shore. Ladies and gentlemen, visualize. The doctors tell you, told, told you if you've got terminal cancer, you've got end time uh, kidney disease, your liver is dead, uh, 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 you, you've got brain cancer. And you only have six months to live. Ladies and gentlemen, God can blow a storm away. He can speak a word and that storm will disappear. I've seen people who, who are miracles, walking miracles. God spoke a word and that cancer disappeared. God spoke a word and that a leg grew along like the other one. God spoke a word and blind eyes have been opened. God spoke a word and uh, uh, arrogant husbands have come back home. God spoke a word and the alcoholic stopped drinking. God spoke a word and the druggie stopped using drugs. God spoke a word and the prostitute stopped selling her body. God, God can do everything but fail. No matter what your storm is today, you lay hold on your anchor. Jesus is the forerunner for us. Just like the man in the boat took the anchor to the shore and gripped it, on something solid, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus died on Calvary. He took our sins on the cross, and he died uh, to pay for our sins. When he arose from the dead, he rose free from sin. He's the first fruits of them that slept. He took away our sins, paid the price. And now all who call upon the name of Jesus, we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. We are in Christ. Our spirit has been connected with the spirit of the living God. We are in Christ. We're still on this earth. We're believers born again by the spirit of God, but we are in Christ. And when Jesus died, his spirit cracked through the veil. He went into the holy of holies, the heavenly holy of holies, that place in the Hebrew tabernacle, that replica where only the high priest could go once a year, Jesus being our high priest, Jesus walked into the heavenly holy of holies. In the spirit, he walked into the heavenly holy of holies. And we who believe were in him and are in him as he anchored our souls. Listen to this. Listen to this. Jesus anchored our souls in God the Father. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, your ship may be tossed and turned. The night may seem like day. You cannot tell the difference between day and night. The pain may be unbearable, but you have hope as an anchor. Your hope and my hope is in Jesus Christ. We have been anchored in Jesus Christ, in God, in heaven. So no matter what trials come upon us, we are anchored. Nothing, nothing, nothing can destroy us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. The scripture says, what shall separate me from the love of Christ? Nothing, no, no not pain, not, not famine, not disease, not sickness, not poverty, not even death. Nothing shall separate us from the love of of God because our soul is anchored in the Lord and we have hope as an anchor. Ladies and gentlemen, we have hope. As long as you're breathing, you have hope. And when we take our last breath, even though some of us may be in a storm taking our last breath, we will pass from life through death into eternal glory. We will pass into eternal life, eternal glory with God. We will not go into that 
place called hell, and then that place called the lake of fire. Only those who put their trust in Jesus, those who hold on to the Lord, those who do not deny Jesus, those who turn back, only the righteous shall see God. We have been declared the righteousness of God. We have hope as an anchor. So it doesn't matter what you're going through, we have hope as an anchor. He's an anchor for my soul. He's an anchor for my soul. The songwriter said, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Another songwriter said, In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need a Savior. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Be very sure, ladies and gentlemen, that your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. And this solid rock is Jesus. He's the one. This solid rock is Jesus. He's the only one. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so glad. I'm so glad my anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ is my solid rock. I'm so glad, Terry, that Jesus is your solid rock. I'm so glad, Dustina. I'm so glad, Waynette. I'm so glad, Roger. I'm so glad, Bishop Elijah. I'm so glad, my friends in Jamaica. I'm so glad, Megan, all over this world. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that our anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Don't give up. Don't turn around. I say don't give up. Don't turn around. God knows. And listen, God has sworn by two immutable things. He sworn upon himself that he will keep you. He has sworn upon his word that he will keep you. You know, there are some people... They speak their word, but they're lying. They're lying. We get lies out of Washington, D.C. every day. We get lies uh, 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 from uh, British news and British broadcasting and uh, uh, NBC, ABC, CBN, TBN, all those ends. We get lies all day. People don't know what to believe. But I believe God. Hallelujah. I believe God. Every word of God is pure. God is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, if you're, if you're hearing this uh, message, if you're listening to the recording, and you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord, give your life to Christ today. Receive Jesus Christ today. Tomorrow is not promised. So many of you are putting off till tomorrow to get right with God. There may not be a tomorrow if Jesus knocks on your door and tells you today, uh, this day, uh, is, your soul is required of you. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Or will you, will you have to say, well, Lord, I'm not ready yet. I, 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 I got this problem in my marriage. I got this problem in this relationship. I got this problem with this alcohol. I got this problem with these drugs. I got this problem. No, no, no. If Jesus knocks on your door and says, this day your soul is required of you, will you go to heaven there's no excuse, ladies and gentlemen. There is no excuse for anyone going to hell today. There is no excuse. I'm talking to a lot of people sitting up in church right now. You're sitting up in church right now, you, and you're going to listen to this recording. You sit up in church. You go to church every Sunday, and you still hate your neighbor. You still hate blacks. You still hate whites. You still hate Hispanics. You still want, want to see America build a wall and shut everybody else who don't look like, shut out everybody who don't like you. You live in hatred. And you say you're going to heaven. God is no fool, ladies and gentlemen. God is no fool. God is righteous. He's holy. And he says, be ye holy as I am holy. Get right, church. Get right. Get right and be made whole. Get right. How can I get right, preacher? By repenting. Well, what's repenting mean? Turn from your sin. How can I turn? 
If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Make that confession and turn your whole life over to the Lord. Get under the, the, the uh, leadership and teaching of an anointed pastor, someone who can train you the word of God. Study your Bible. Learn how to pray. Turn from wickedness. Say no to sin. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be sitting up in church feeling guilty. As soon as church is over, you're going to go get a drink. You're going to get a 40. You're going to buy a six-pack. You're going to buy a bottle of wine or open that uh, uh, bottle of Jim Beam. Ladies and gentlemen, stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. Time is winding up. We're in the end days. This is the time to get right with God. Get right with God and do it now. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. I pray today that you'll hear this word and do it. you'll surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll say, well, I'm waiting on my husband to give his life to Jesus. No, your husband may, may not make it. Your husband has heard the word of God. Your husband hears the word of God. Or I'm waiting on my wife to make her decision. We want to make our decision together. Look, ladies and gentlemen, in this world, it's every man for himself, every woman for herself. If your husband won't receive Jesus, then you let your husband let let your husband go whichever way God's going to take him. But you be sure that you're saved. Well, uh, 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 I'm waiting on my children to make a decision for Jesus. Well, look, your child's 40 years old. Your child is old enough to make a decision. Don't wait on that child. Give your heart to Jesus. Surrender your life totally to the Lord Jesus Christ, and receive the Holy Ghost. Receive salvation. Make sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock from the moment you give your heart to jesus you are in christ and your anchor is in christ you have hope as an anchor and your hope is already fixed in jesus jesus is the forerunner he's already gone into heaven to provide a place for you he said in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you don't lose your place don't use your place don't lose your place because of some girlfriend or some bottle of liquor or some drugs or some powder don't lose your place because of some money don't lose your place because of some sexual feeling sex only lasts a few minutes ladies and gentlemen what is a few minutes compared to eternity in hell why spend eternity in hell because you were insisted on having sex with your neighbor's wife. Surrender. Turn from sin. Get born again. Get saved. Be very sure that your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. We have hope as an anchor. Hallelujah. 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 I have decided, ladies and gentlemen, to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. To all my friends in Kenya and uh, South Africa and Nigeria and France and Germany and China, Russia, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, the United States, uh, Jamaica, to all of my friends, be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Praise God, we're anchored in Jesus Christ. My soul is anchored in Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this word. Thank you, Father, for your immutability, that you back up your word, that you swore upon yourself and upon your oath that you would keep us. And we thank you, Father, and our trust is in you. We make you our trust, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you, Father, for giving us eternal life. Now, Lord, keep us even though the storms may come, even though we might, may not be able to determine whether it's daytime or night, our trust is in you because we have hope as an anchor. Bless each and every one under the sound of my voice. Rebuke the devourer, God. Set them free. Set the people free and deliver them. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.